uh, almost the same way uh, 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 with the other uh, the disease groups. We are seeing the major adverse cardiac events, again, reported in 0.3 to 0.4% on the psoriasis patients also came down with the years. We see the IBD, uh, hardly you see when patients have been reported in the psoriasis group, so a very, very limited number of patients. We see the ulcerative colitis also will be only reported in kilosing spondylitis uh, patients. I will end my talk with, with sharing with the second case, which is a 20 years, eight uh, Filipino female patient with a history of psoriasis for the childhood. All her entire part are covered with psoriasis, a skull, nail disease, significant itching all over the body with significant genital uh, itching. Uh, she, because of that, she was always stigmatized, depressed, alone, no social life because of her disease activity. She just said to me that I want a normal life. I don't want anything else. So have been treated topically, have been treated with phototherapy. No systemic treatment have been offered to her. She had lots of safety concerns. So the current situation, Bassi score has a 41 body surface area, 80%, the LQI 30, scalp affection, so very severe disease. As we will see in the photos here, a very severe generalized in, 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 in middle age lady patient, we can understand how uh, miserable life she is living because of her disease, how itchy is her scalp. So re really we need something to uh, make a significant change in the patient. We sit with the patient, we give explanation about the safety of the pathologics. We show her some photos before and after the treatment and the patient convinced it to start. So what's the main concern is the safety. So we need to select a medication with a very good safety profile. Based on that, we offer the new life with the sikikinumab treatment for this patient. And this is only after the loading dose. We have only hyperpigmentation. We don't have any disease activity. Uh, as we can see, we achieved at least passing 90 in such patient within only five weeks. Scalp have been getting better everywhere. They have been getting better, complete clearance, just hyperpigmentation after that. And this is the treatment goals that we are mentioning with using these two molecules in our psoriasis patients. And with that, I'd like you to thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for the interesting presentation. Uh, still, we have time, five minutes for the questions. Any questions for Dr. Ahmed? We will close now because we have another session. Thank you for all the audience and thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for your uh, interesting and informative presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we are coming to session four. Uh, the first uh, lecture in this session will be about urticaria. Personally, I like to treat urticaria, but because it is satisfying when you treat the patient, you will find the result in, within one or two or three days. And the patient will be satisfied because he, ha he has found treatment after going to many places. So this uh, article lecture will be given by Dr. Iman Nasser. She is a consultant immunologist and allergist in the Department of Medicine in the Royal Hospital of the Ministry of Health in the Sultanate of Oman. She did her fellowship training in immunology and allergy at the Royal London, at the Royal London Hospital in the UK in 2013. Upon joining the Royal, the Royal Hospital here in Oman, she established the Adult Immunology and Allergy Unit looking after the patients with immunodeficiencies and various allergic disorders. The allergy unit in the Royal Hospital has recently been recognized globally by the Global Asthma and Allergy 
European Network as a center of excellence in the treatment of urticaria as well as the center of excellence in the treatment of angioedema. She has a wide experience in the treatment of various allergic and immunological diseases. Please welcome Dr. Iman Nasser. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the, like to thank the, the uh, organizing, uh, organizing committee, thanking everyone, thanking here, everyone those here, watching, those online, watching thanking online, these thanking the sponsoring companies, sponsoring companies, thanking the for giving me the opportunity to, opportunity to uh, speak about a very, about a very uh, dear topic, uh, dear to, me, topic to me, which is uh, Ticaria. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, there's no laser, there's no laser pointer, pointer, on this pointer on this one. And this is not a this touch is not screen. A touch screen. Okay, okay. If anyone has a pointer, it will be very appreciated. Okay, so we'll start. First slide, please. Slide, please. It's not working, it's not working. Excuse me, can we get, another, me, pointer? Can we get another pointer? It's not working, it's not working. I guess to wait, Dr. Ima. Wait, Dr. Ima. Okay, okay. Maybe you can advance Maybe you the, can slide, advance from the, the slide from the control. Okay, so this okay, is the first so this slide. Is the this first is the Arctic uh, 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 team, the Center team, of the Excellence, of Excellence where, we where we audited the, uh, the uh, Center by Professor Marcus. Professor Marcus. Uh, we also uh, got, we reason, also to got reason for entry to the Center of Excellence. Slide, please. Slide, please. So the learning so objectives, the learning objectives so very quickly, the very time, quickly, is, very the time is very limited into the, the, the definition of epidemiology, epidemiology the classification of chronic urticaria, pathophysiology, diagnosis, and treatment. Next, please. Next, definition, Next of urticaria. definition of urticaria. So urticaria is a urticaria dermatological, is a dermatological condition. condition. It is the sudden, it is the sudden appearance of itchy hives, or, hives wheels. or wheels. It can it be associated, can be with, associated with angioedema or angioedema, or angioedema, alone. angioedema alone. Now the hive has now three, the hive typical, has three typical features. There is the central, there is the central swelling, swelling of variable size, usually, size. It's usually surrounded, it's by, a surrounded by a reflex erythema, associated with itching, associated with sometimes, itching burning sometimes burning sensation, and it results within a few hours to 20 Angioedema, angioedema is sudden pronounced, sudden pronounced of the dermis, swelling of the dermis, and sometimes pain, sometimes rather than, pain itch, rather than itch, itch, involvement, involvement below, and it takes 72, it takes 72 hours, for hours for resolution. Next, please. So if it's so acute, if it's acute, these are or urticaria or lesions that come and go in less than six weeks. If it continues, if it to, continues to come and go over six weeks, we call it chronic urticaria or chronic urticaria. And I'll concentrate, and on, on, this. I'll concentrate Next, on this. Next, please. Next, please. Next. 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 Epidemiology. Epidemiology. Next. So urticaria, so urticaria is more common than is previously more thought. thought. It's reported, it's reported the prevalence of 0.5 to 1% of, to 1 of, the, population of any the population at any given time. Female to male ratio, female to male to ratio, one, two to one, and all age groups can, can be affected. Usually the incidence is between 20, 20 and 40 years of age. And 40 years so this, age. So this working really group and the most stressed, uh, group, stressed uh, group. There is no apparent there is no relationship, apparent relationship economic background, ethnicity, and income. And the prevalence at Royal Hospital and the Allergy 
hospital and the allergy clinic in 2016 was 0.32%. Was 0 32 but I believe it's but much, higher, believe than it's this much now, higher than this as now, we are as we are diagnosing more and more of these patients. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, in, in the coming in, few, in the coming uh, few months, uh, months or year, um, we'll be conducting um, another thing to see whether this prevalence has increased. increased. Uh, increased. But, overall, but overall, the prevalence of the reported wild was to be 2% or even more. Next. So the burden of so the, the burden of uh, chronic next. urticaria next. Next, please. Next, please. So chronic so urticaria has, chronic really, urticaria significant has really significant impact. impact. We never, we uh, never understood, uh, understood the, the conditions until, I had, until so I had so many stories from change and to, to change, divorce, to divorce, um, um, hitting children, hitting children, and, uh, and really, it really affects, really, the, quality really affects the quality of so life. Daily living, so daily living, they're eating, they're eating, concentration, sleep, mental sleep, state, things, mental social state, functions, social functions. Uh, it's unpredictable. Uh, it's unpredictable. They say I can't attend the function. Suddenly I will have a or in front, in front of everyone. In front of everyone. Leisure, treatment, Leisure, induced, treatment restrictions, induced restrictions, and self-reception. Self Next. Next. Next, please. Next, please. Now, what chronic urticaria does, does to patients? Almost more than 40% uh, of the patients uh, of report, the uh, report uh, disruption, uh, disruption of their, of their uh, relationship, with their, relationship with their partners. 50% don't sleep 50 well, 50% don't sleep well, 50% lose concentration, concentration. Half can't work half normally, can't or, even work normally or even attend schools. They are 60% moody, yeah, and, moody and irritable, found very significant, found very significant in the clinic. 75% uh, uh, just reduced doing or reduced doing the things they like. Next, please. Next, please. So unpredictable, so unpredictable attacks, attacks fatigue, fatigue, sleeplessness, sleeplessness depression, depression, and anxiety. anxiety. It really has, it really a, lot has a lot of economic social burden. economic Next. burden. Next. Next, please. Next, please. So you can see so where, you can see uh, where uh, chronic urticaria uh, ranks after psoriasis after came to psoriasis came to so, really need so we really need to give special attention, special attention, special attention, to, this special attention to this disease. Next. Next. Classification. Classification. Next. next. So chronic urticaria. So chronic is urticaria is the of urticaria of urticaria in which it's characterized by sudden appearance of wheels and edema of both for more than six and we divide it and we divide it into two chronic spontaneous spontaneous urticaria where whether there is a trigger known but known there is no there is no physical or external trigger or external into it. Trigger while into chronic it. inducible urticaria, which we call SINDU, has specific has triggers, specific such, triggers as such as vibration, cold, heat, vibration, uh, heat, aquagenic, uh, aquagenic um, um, thermographic, solar. thermographic, solar. Next, please. Next, please. Now causes could now be causes infectious could diseases, be infectious diseases, diseases viral, bacterial, viral, viral, parasitic, thyroid, autoimmune, especially autoimmune, uh, SLE, functional, uh, SLE autoantibodies, functional autoantibodies, and malignancy. Next. And malignancy. Next. What is the pathophysiology? What is the pathophysiology next? next? So the pathogenesis. So the pathogenesis. It was thought to be either, either autoimmune or, or idiopathic. Next. Next. So fifty-five percent, five percent, or sixty percent, approximately. There is no cause. There is no cause known. And forty-five percent is, percent is autoimmune. Good. Thanks. Uh, uh, the main, uh, the main uh, uh, common pathway uh, is common activation, pathway of, the is activation of the muscles, leading to release of histamine, to release and, other of histamine and other inflammatory mediators, causing dilation, irritation of your irritation sensory nerves, nerves from these histamines, from these histamines and, uh, and other uh, mediators, uh, mediators, and cause symptoms such, and such, cause symptoms such as high itch, reflex erythema, reflex and, erythema and, angioedema. and angioedema. So this is your mast so cell here. No laser. So here, no this is in so here, this is the muscle. In blue you is the muscle. Epsilon you have your epsilon receptors, epsilon and, receptors the IgE and you have binding. the IgE binding to these, to these epsilon receptors. Here comes here an comes IgG an IgG anti IgE IgE causing, IgE causing, IgE causing release. histamine release. Another another is an IgG against, an IgG against, epsilon, against epsilon, receptors epsilon, epsilon, epsilon receptors themselves, causing mast cell causing release, mast release of, of histamine. And the final is and cross linking, is cross -linking of an antigen, 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 and auto antigen usually on the IgE, which activates the mast cells. So. So, so there is an important there is an important role, role on the FC epsilon receptors in CSU. In CSU. So, uh, so look at the green. Uh, look at the green. The autoallergen. This is what we've mentioned. The autoallergen is. Auto we have almost is, two hundred autoallergens in, in our body. Auto we can be allergic, to, can any be allergic, one allergic to any one of them. Using the autoimmunity type one. The 
uh, the other spectrum is uh, autoimmunity auto type, auto type, type, type 2 and this is where the IgG is against, is against the FCA, uh, epsilon receptors, uh, epsilon or, receptors against the or against the IgE which sits, on, which the sits on the FCA epsilon receptors. So in type 1 so in autoimmune, autoimmune which auto allergic patients, auto -allergic where patients are allergic to all the chemicals in the body, and usually those the body. patients, usually have, those an patients have an IgE against thyroid peroxidase, uh, we call it uh, uh, thyroid peroxidase, thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Those patients, those with, type patients with type 1 immunity usually benefit, more, usually with benefit more with treatment, especially omalizumab, uh, come back to that. Uh, come back to so that. They, so have found they have found taking a serum from a patient, from a who, patient has who has IgE an IgE anti-thyroid anti peroxidase, peroxidase and introduced and it introduced intradermally in the skin, they end up with, end this, up with this wheel, wheel shows, shows uh, reactivity. Uh, reactivity. So, so Type two B type two is B where you take is where you take uh, the uh, whether it's IgG whether it's IgG as antibodies against thyroid peroxidase or against, peroxidase or against, uh, or against other uh, other um, uh, antibodies uh, antibodies and we diagnose, and we diagnose with various, with various uh, things uh, things done in a research lab. done in a research what we do is the what we do is the autologous serum, serum, serum skin, skin test where we take blood the of the patient, blood of the patient sent to and give it take give it take serum and give it Intradermally, uh, intradermally and wait, and for, the wait for the wheel. We to have develop. the basophil activation. We have the basophil activation. This is done again in, this is done in again research in, in labs. Research and labs. ELISA and trying ELISA to detect trying to IgG and IgG and the receptors. receptors. So patients so with type patients two with auto type two immune, auto uh, immune uh, chronic uh, chronic they have high IgG, they have high IgG and, and they have low and they have low IgE. In type two B, in type as two B, as you mentioned, these are the IgG, the IgG anti -IgE against the anti IgG e or e against or the FC against the FC epsilon. Receptor. Receptor. They have low IgE. They have low IgE. Now. Now there are modulators, there are modulators and regenerators. So there are causes, triggers, so there are triggers, so stress, uh, drugs, infections, uh, drugs, and, infections and, foods. and foods. All these can trigger, uh, can trigger uh, histamine, release. Uh, histamine release. So in diagnosis, so in diagnosis, usually, usually if it's acute or don't, don't, don't need to tell the patient. It's most, the patient, it's most likely, likely going to go unless away. Unless you think it's unless you think it's suspected uh, food uh, allergy, food where allergy, the where the patient eats within an hour, within an hour, develops urticaria, and when stopping, it goes away. In chronic articaria, in chronic you, articaria need you need to exclude diagnosis, differential diagnosis, you have to assess you disease, to assess activity, disease activity, and control and, and impact, control and, impact and, identify and identify what exacerbating, exacerbating triggers, triggers so you can remove it. So this is so the aims according, according, the aims the according to the latest and updated guidelines. So we need the history to confirm all differential, differential, differential diagnosis, causes, comorbidities, consequences, consequences, and components. And so the history, so ask the history, the ask the patient. What, when did it start? What, when did it start? How, long does it, How long does it last uh, for? They last might say for. They might say just a few minutes or hours, and then it goes away, then comes back again. Jumps from one place to another. from one place to another. Any provoking factors? Any provoking factors? Any fever? Any that might point towards, towards, an, autoimmune point towards an autoimmune disease. Physical examination. Physical this examination. Is this is tailored to history. And we might add and we might add provocation tests to diagnose the diagnostic provocation tests, test. which I'll uh, elaborate, which I'll, uh, elaborate, uh, elaborate more. more. So the differential so diagnosis. I want to go too much in detail. Time, but map your time, but map your time. For example, mastocytosis, articarial vasculitis, muscle syndrome, and chiropyrin associated periodic and so on. All those can mimic, those can articaria. mimic articaria. So the algorithm, so the algorithm very, quickly, very quickly is do you, do you have the part where you have the part where you have uh, articaria with angioedema and the part where you have only angioedema. So in the part where you have articaria, where you have whether you have angioedema or not. Are there any recurrent unexplained, recurrent unexplained fever, fever, any joint pain, anything, pain, anything explains, 